Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for yesterday and we thank the Lord for everyone who stood in the gap praying with us here in London. Um, there was a need to really break forth in prayers. And then, um, can you know, when the enemy rises up like a flood, our Lord will usually raise a standard against him. So it was needful that we stay up and really do a sound spiritual warfare. And the Lord helped us yesterday to break forth in prayers and in spiritual warfare. And I thank the Lord for the line yesterday for everyone that stood and had also a wonderful time of prayer. Brethren, that is our life. Others may trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of our Lord. And we have no other other than the name of Yeshua. Others may have where to lean on, people to run on, but in everything in our Christian life. For the Bible says, for without me, you can do nothing. When we come to a place where we totally look up to him, knowing he is our father, he fights the battle for us, he moves ahead of us. Brethren, every believer needs to bring ourselves to this point. And I want to assure you yesterday there was a breakthrough in the spirit. And that is the confidence, extreme confidence. And I'm trying to encourage everyone, it doesn't matter whatever, how tiny, how big, take it to Yeshua in prayers. And then do what he has asked us to do. A wonderful and beautiful time of spiritual warfare for always and for all time and for in eternity. Yeshua wins and we continue to win. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you for a time we spent together at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for the victory of yesterday is a resounding victory powerful resounding thank you for all of us that stayed in the line on the line and prayed lord in our houses everywhere and prayed lord thank you because now it's glorious it's powerful it's excellent thank you lord for your servant who stays on sunday morning each morning led by your daughter apostle antoinette lord heavenly father jesus to pray bless them Bless all our teams, bless all your children, bless all of them day after day, month after month. These faithful servants of yours have woken up early to stand in the gap on behalf of us. Bless them abundantly. And this morning, Lord, let your word shine in our heart. Let it bring joy. Let it bring confidence. Let it build us up. Let it bring hope, Lord. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the despondent rise up to their feet through your word this morning. May our spirit man be quickened through your word. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, the Lord has, you know, been reminding us of who he is. And today our prayer is that everyone listening and those who will get it afterwards or as we share it to all our friends, faith will be quickened. Hearts will be quickened. Strength will come. Feeble knees shall be made strength. Hearts that, you know, had melted will come back again together. Any hope that has fallen will come back. Why? We are taking our time to see who Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, said himself he is. And brethren, there's no other confidence than we can have other than this. And each time we wake up in the morning and remind <coughs> sorry please ourselves of all these things who we are in him at all times brethren we will stand strong and i want to yes last week the lord helped us to say remember i am i am these i am the door i am the good shepherd and he reminded us again and today we want to continue to look at what he said in the book of first of john chapter 15 from verse 1 to 5 and we read and the lord says i am the true vine he's telling every one of us following him or those who are in doubt or those who are saying can i can i join in to this oh i'm deciding or i'm in between i don't really understand you know what i'm going in i need someone to explain it more to me 
this morning we are explaining him as he explained himself and if we all have the faith to believe that he says in john chapter 15 verse 1 I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Hallelujah. And he says that every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the words which I speak through you, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit, of itself except ye abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he that abideth in me and i in me the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing hallelujah the lord is saying to us this morning I am the true vine, the vine that feeds, the vine that yields its fruits in all seasons, in all times. As we read, we, we saw the other time and um, two, two weeks ago in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, it says that the fruit in that yard, in the court of Elohim, beareth fruit. Amen. And it abideth forever. And it brings us east fruit every month. So it's not a seasonal thing that we have to wait. But at all times you come, there is a fruit. The Lord is saying, I am the true vine. If you know what a vine is, if you know that it is this that be brings forth beautiful juices, beautiful wines that satisfies, you can pluck it and eat it on its own. You can press it and preserve it in the fridge. Anyhow, he says that you drink that satisfied he says i am that that will satisfy you in life i'm the one that will feed you i'm the one that you will drink and taste no more i'm the one that you will drink and all you will get is sweet taste and satisfaction and all and the one that you will drink and it will quench your thirst and the one that you will drink and you will be full everything that comes from me it's me. Brethren, I want to encourage everyone. It doesn't matter what comes your way. Just know it that he is the vine. If Satan wants to try with what to eat or what to drink or what, whatever, just as we saw last week, he is the bread of life. Yes, when you take the, the, the solid, you will want to put in the liquid so that it can go down very well. He says, I'm both solid and liquid. I'm both the bread that when you eat me, the word, my word, because the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, we know it that he himself is the word. And when we eat him, and here he says, not just eating me, I am still the true vine. I am still that tree. And my father is the husband man. And the other way around, brethren, when we look at it, he says to us, every branch in me will bear fruit. If really we are of him, it then means that the things coming out of us should feed the nations, should satisfy the nations, should bring comfort to the nations. Everything coming to us should bring thirst. As the Bible says that we are the salt of the world. If we lose its server, then why, how again will anything about us again? have any survival. There's no other way. And Jesus is saying, I am the true vine. If you want to abide in me, there's a kind of fruit I bring forth. And that kind of fruit is what I expect. If you abide in me, you can, he says, can in white berries bear, you know, good sweet, you know, and fruits? No, it cannot. Then if we abide in him, what it means that Everything, because we are now inside him, that we have no choice again but to bear the fruits that he bears. The fruit of righteousness, the fruit of hope, the fruit of joy, the fruit, the fruit of peace, the fruit of looking forward to him. There's no way we will be in him and then we're bringing up for white grapes. 
We are bringing up thorns and briars. There's no way we will be in him and things coming out of us do not edify. And brethren, this is what we keep working on. This is what we all bring to light. Individual, between children and the family and the parents, between husband and wife, between the church, between friends, between community, all right out there in the church so that we make sure that anything bringing forth anything that is not of the Lord, we bring it to light. We talk about it we pray about it we say this is not of him this i'm seeing it doesn't matter you know sometimes satan may want to use scriptures to justify things that are not right brethren he did it with our lord when he came to him and said to him if thou be the son of god command this thing to become bread if thou be the son of god throw yourself down for the scripture says he will send his angels charge He's a big confused. He's a he's confusion himself. He knows how to distort the this, this scriptures. He knows how to distort visions and at the same time use scriptures to cover it. And yet it is not working. So brethren, what is the law? See, anything we see we are doing and is not bringing forth the fruits that exemplifies Yeshua Hamishiah. We step and says, hang on, wait a little bit. His blessings makes rich and adds no sorrow. His works bring liberty and do not put into bondage. Therefore, what are these fruits actually coming out from me now? It's not of the Lord. And once we're able to set that out quickly, we cut off because he said, I am the true vine. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit shall be cut off. We are meant to bring forth fruit. We are in our season and we've named all those fruit looking like him. So it's a challenge to everyone listening, both old and young, far and near, wherever you are, at what level you are in the Lord. It is a challenge for all of us each morning to say, Lord, may I bear the sweet fruit that comes from you, may, that represents you. May I feed, may I be a salt, may I be a light, may I satisfy all the people that will come to me today. Father, may my life you know bring forth your goodness and your mercy and may your light shine this is everyone who is born against prayer every day and the lord is saying i am that true vine no other vine no other hope no other satisfaction none else can feed you none else can quench your thirst none else can fill you up it is only me and the source of all these things is my father, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah. The name you call him in your language, that is who he is. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, this is two of us. Is the triune that is where we were embedded. So brethren, let's keep our anchor strongly in this vine. So strongly so that what comes out from us. When the enemy comes, we remind ourselves, look, enemy, I'm rooted somewhere. I am rooted in the true vine. You are the wide grape. You are the one that, you know, bites the teeth. You are the one that is not, you know, that, that is not good. You are the one that the, is tangy, is to the is to the extreme left no way your tanginess anyway is to the net. no i do not want you let's remember at all times he is the true vine no other again and me you we are all grafted in and as branches of him we bring forth fruits we bring forth food meat for repentance that we represent the tree from which we are coming from and if at any point the satisfaction is not there remind yourself that we are rooted in the true vine hallelujah and that will take us again to the next one and what did he says he says in the book of john chapter 8 verse 58 a powerful one powerful place in verse 58 he said Let's start from 57. 57 said, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. He didn't say before Abraham was, I was. Because he is. He is and is he to come. He says before Abraham was, Abraham came and Abraham is gone. I am still the same yesterday, today and forever. I change not. I have been from the beginning. You may not really understand. I want to encourage someone this morning from this verse of the scripture. When I was reading it, brethren, I was just pouring out my heart to him. I was pouring out my mind to him. I was pouring out my burden to him. I was pouring out my cares to him. I was reassuring myself. I was shouting, hallelujah. I was saying, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you, are. you said before Abraham was whatever I'm going through today will be worse by tomorrow everything will be gone by tomorrow but you are forever and ever he said to them you don't really understand and I'm speaking to someone this morning that situation will be worse by tomorrow it will be worse it wasn't there yesterday although it's existing today I want to assure you that by tomorrow it will be a worse by the in the name of Yeshua, it will go, be gone. You know, I like King James, you know, English. It says, and it come to pass. It shall come to pass. It will come and it will surely pass in the name of Yeshua. The Lord is saying to everyone today, replace that situation in the name of Abraham. Whatever it is, he said, was, before Abraham was, I am. Remind yourself, there is the great I am. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah, brethren. He says there in <clears throat> Micah chapter 5, chapter 5 verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth had been from old, from everlasting. Hallelujah. Jesus had been from old, from everlasting. For those who query his divinity, for those who query and oh, he's only the son of man, born by Mary, you know, it startles me. When those who call themselves Christians come to debate and says, he is just the son of man. He's just the brother. Oh, he just came and he is not the father. Those who believe and those who carry this Bible and yet they do not believe in the Trinity. It startles me what they are reading. Brethren, maybe you are there. You are saying, well, thank you, Lord. And inside your heart, because of your background, because of where you were raised up, and he says, oh, Jesus, the, Luke says he's the son of man. He is the son of God. If then he'll be. Or you're listening to the occultic set that says to themselves that Jesus is the son of man. Now listen to what the Bible says. Why would these people argue and knock on the door on door and sell tracts and sell whatever they are indulgences and whatever they call them and they are given to people to buy magazines when they do not believe that he had been from the beginning? I wonder what Jesus they are, they are worshipping. It may be another one. It may be Jesus of Oyimbo. It may be the one that whatever they've given him, but not the Yeshua Hamashiach, the one who is and who had been, who had, who is and who is to come and who lives forever. In the book of John, first seven, chapter 17, verse 8, the Bible says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Amen before the world was so if anybody says oh jesus is not the lord tell him oh he was just born by mary take him to the book of john chapter 17 and verse 5 himself take him back to the book of micah chapter 5 verse 2 and tell him take him back to the book of john chapter 5 verse chapter 8 verse 58 take him back to the book of john chapter 17 and verse 24 father i will that also whom thou had given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of this world. Man can only stop 
on things that he knew between the time he lived here on earth. And probably because it was written as history and they can read and then, but the things before the word, what man can talk about that? No man. It only takes, that's why the Bible says that the scriptures is written by the inspiration of Elohim. It's not by man. That is only him. He says that before the foundation of the world, Christ had been. Yeshua HaMashiach had been. Jesus the Messiah had been. Brethren, he is with him. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3, the Bible says, Without father, without mother, without descent, having ne neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually forever. Amen. And Revelation 22, 13, he says, I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the last and the end, the first and the last. Amen. That is him, who he is. And brethren, knowing this, brethren, in our heart, it doesn't matter. I want to ask sure everyone, that mountain before you, remind that mountain. Do you know who I belong to? I belong to the one that says that before Abraham I was. It doesn't matter what the sickness. I am serving the one that is everlasting father. I'm serving the one that was before the foundation of this world. So it doesn't matter what I'm going through. He knew it before I was born. It's already been planned. My way of escape has been planned. My deliverance has been planned. My salvation has been planned. It's already there. It's not like it's a, you know, it, it is um, it, it is um, something that is just coming and it's taking him on our ways. It has been before. It doesn't matter what brings confusion to you. Remember, there's an unknowing father who created heaven and earth, who had been. So do not be in despair at any time. Remember that song. Do not be discouraged. God is over all. Don't be discouraged. It doesn't matter what comes. Know it that before Abraham, before that situation, before that mountain, before that giant, before that thing people put confidence in, before what man had put in, that Jesus had been. Amen. Before whatever created, before whatever he says, ah, even what the what people say, I say, oh, this is wonder. Even when you think that sickness is there, before you were created, before that sickness could come, Jesus had been. Therefore, let's look up to this rock. Remember that song. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. There is a solid rock. Who had been before the foundation of this world, before this earth was created. Don't, don't let the enemy make you short-sighted. Don't let situations and trials and tribulations and tempests make you short-sighted. No, through the eyes of faith, look beyond to see that he had been before. Amen. And that mountain will crumble. And that hill shall be made plain. And whatever that is feasting in front of you, the hands will drop immediately when you call upon the name of Elohim. No wonder he said, said unto us, if we call upon his name, we shall be saved. For these calls he had been, because all power belongs to him, because he had been. And he said, remember again, before Abraham was, I am. Before what that thing is, he is today. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Put it up before him. Hezekiah remind, remembered. And when it was said to him that he will die, he took to the Lord and says, remember. Je Je Jehoshaphat, remember when the letter was written to him. And he says, well, look at this letter, Lord. I wave this to you to read whatever written, whatever handwriting of ordinances written against you. Wave it to 
him that had been before the creation of the world. And he is. He knows. He will read it. He knows how it came about. He knows the plan of the enemy. He knows for he had been before we were created. May the Lord encourage us this day not to look at mountains, not to look at situations, not to be discouraged, but to stand and quit like men and says to ourselves, look, before all this had been, he had been. Therefore, my hope is in him. Victory is sure because all power belongs to him. May we be encouraged this morning. May someone's faith rise. May someone prophesy to herself this morning. May someone prophesy to himself this morning. May someone says, yes, let the weak say I am strong because the, he is the I am. He is because he is. And let's prophesy that and remind ourselves. I remind myself, you remind ourselves. Our Christian life will be blissful. But when we walk in ignorance, as this set walked in ignorance and are still walking in ignorance, then we will not recognize his power, his potentials, and what he's able to do. But when we recognize that, all things easy, 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 wheezy, breezy, brethren, it will just go very like that and cool. Brethren, let's come to this point and say, Lord Jesus, take over. And I know that you are. Hallelujah. Another place we're going to read is John chapter 13. From verse 13 to 17. And it says in John chapter 13. Very interesting place. Which we will get in into now. John 13 from verse 13. You call ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, you say well, for so I am. For so I am. I am the Lord and the Master. You call me Master and you call me Lord. And ye say well, you say very well. I am Lord of Lords. I am King of Kings. I am the ultimate power and authority. I am the ultimate principality. I am the ultimate. All belongs to me. When I move, no one can take it back from the original situation where I've taken it from. When I root, no man is able to operate to uproot it. When I say, no man created, no demon, no principality or power is able to counter what I have said. You said I am Lord. You said I am Master. You say, well, I am. Amen. So I am. Brethren, we are looking at Lord and Master. Lord and Master. And I want to encourage everyone today to open your eyes to this deep teaching. We can only we can dwell on this Lord and Master, I mean for days and weeks and even for the rest of our lives. Because it has it envelops everything about us. The Lord is saying, You said I am master and Lord, you so well. So I am. I am the master, the master of all things. You know that song when we when we when, when the when the wind came and in the ocean and the disciples didn't know what to do for water was coming into the boat and when the water was coming into the boat brethren we saw it and what happened and then they cried and woke him up and says lord you are the end of this boat at the end corner and you are sleeping. Can you not see that waters and the tempest have raged and they have come into the boat? We are sinking. Oh no, brethren. I don't know where you are now. And you are saying, Lord, I'm sinking. This situation is sinking me. This thought is sinking me. Lord, this is sinking. When I remember it, my heart jumps. It's like a mountain. Lord, this water is overflowing. My boat had been clean, you know, just, you know, going, gliding on top of the water. But right now, it's imminent. I could see it is going down. Nothing will stop it from. Lord, I can even see the wings. 
They are not kind. They are not gentle. They are raging. They are like tempest. Their waves are standing tall. What? 20 feet, 30 feet, 100 feet. And it, it wants to land. And when it lands, it will collapse on us. And it will take us right deep into the ocean. I don't know what situation you're crying out like that. They cried out. And when they cried out, not knowing that the master of ocean and earth and sky is in the boat. Can someone know that he's the master? He's the master. Jesus is the master. Jesus is the master. The master of all things created or all things that had been in existence or all things out there. He's the master. He's the master of knowledge. He's the master of wisdom. He's the master of might. He's the master of power. He's the master everywhere, brethren. If we know that, we will not walk in our own power. If we know that, we're not going to walk in our own ways. We're not going to take decisions. We're not going to think I can do it. For by, by, by strength shall no man prevail. When things come up and when enemy rise, raises up like a, a, you know, like a storm, the Bible says he will raise a standard against him. Why? He's the master. He is the master, brethren. Standing tall. So no matter what is that thing challenging, Satan challenging, situations challenging, speaking against you and saying, oh, you can't rise or you can't do it. I'm taking mastery of you. No way. Tell them you can't have mastery of me. Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? Is it in smoking? Is it in evil habit? Is it in pornography? Is it in watching dirty things? Is it in evil heart, unforgiving spirit, wickedness? Is it in all those things? Taking mastery of you. Is it in out there in prostitution? Whatever that thing is that is acting like a God over you. Tell that thing today. I have read in the book of John chapter 13 and verse 14. That G verse 13, verse 13, that John 13, 13, Jesus is the master. You can't have mastery over me. And in that voice and in that strength, tell him to back off. Tell that habit, tell that thought, tell, tell that besetting sin that keeps overwhelming you. Tell that thing you're seeing and it kind of like a magnet trying to lure you, trying to take you in there. That is like, you know, you can't pray, you can't read the Bible, you are tired and when you want you sleep. Tell that demon, you are not my master. Jesus is my master and him will I serve. Amen. And amen, brethren. Amen and amen. Today we need to stand up for our right in him. And what is that right? Is to tell Satan, now can you listen? In the past you've cheated. In the past you've been the master. But today I have known the truth that sets free. And that truth says that Jesus is the master. Yeshua Hamashiach is the master. Amen. And he will rule my life. He will take charge of my life. And brethren, he says, I am Lord. He is the Lord. No demon will lord over us. No Satan, no sickness will pose as a Lord. No situation will pose as a Lord. No inordinate affection will pose as a Lord. Those things that are there, you know, we are struggling with it in the Christian life. Brethren, they are not Lords. For the Lord is Lord. Hallelujah. The ultimate. Every other thing we see here on earth is just like... It's just like when you are looking like a like of it. A like of it. The kingdoms of this world are a like of it. And that's why leaders are abusing it. That's why those in authority and in powers are abusing it. Because they don't understand. They, they, they only heard about it and they want to be like it. But they are not. And that's why they're saying things. They're doing things. Bringing in selfishness. They don't care about multitudes and millions of people whom they are looking after. That's why it doesn't. It's not even at that. At every level of leadership, people try to make themselves not the leadership of Christ, but the leadership. But, but their own leadership. The leadership of Satan that torments, that perpetrates wickedness, that stabs people, that brings in laws to destroy the people and not to build them up, to put up things that 
quick you know, put up the adrenaline of people up until their blood vessels constrict and they die. No simple thing. Nothing comes easy. The, the wickedness that people are frowned faces out there on the streets everywhere. Everybody is frowning. People are demanding rights. You do this. You get this. No mercy. Nothing. People's heart hardened and ordered and he festered through the society because the Satan made himself Lord and he's a tax master. He's a wicked one. And look at our society society today no mercy no joy nothing intolerance hatred bitterness all going ratio all those things hatred people are destroying people are killing people are shooting and it's all why because somebody esteems himself lord over the others and therefore all these things are coming brethren we this is where we stand and says for us christians it ought not to be so the only lord is jesus christ the master is him. He is the master. And he showed us an example in that same place. He says, if I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I had given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. When people talk about Lord and master, the ultimate is serving. The ultimate, although he's Lord and master, he is serving. Do you like to serve? Do you serve others? Do you run away from responsibility? Do you run away from serving others? You are not you are not representing Christ at all. You are not representing Christ. Do you need to be reminded that you need to be part? Do you need to do this? And for those of us who are preachers, who are overseers, or who are pastors, or whatever you are in the ministry, the title. Whether it's a big ministry or a small ministry looking after, are you serving them? As our master had given us examples, he says, I am Lord. I am master. I have all the power. I have all the strength. Every belongs to me. All authority is on my shoulder. For the Bible says it in the book of Isaiah. It says, and the government shall be on his shoulder. That's where the government is, brethren on his shoulder and here the bible is saying if i wish to do this then we have to follow his example his example for he is the master he is the lord therefore whatever he had put in our heart hands to do let's know it that it is for service where you are is to serve your nation is to serve your county, is to serve your constituency, is to serve your people, is to serve your word, is to serve those in the office, those, yes, you are the manager, but you're there to look after the welfare of the people in your hand. It's an honor to look after people. It's an honor to care for them. It's an honor as they're doing things, as they're being productive in their areas of work, in their offices, they leave their families, they come trying to make sure the organization, the establishment, you know, strives gains you know does well is your count it as an honor as that manager to look after them not trying to sit there and you're performing them managing them doing this you know looking at time when they come in giving them queries and orders no empathy no heart don't be that harsh remember that yeshua is the ultimate master and the lord not you not you you are only doing a little bit that was just given you by way of responsibility. Take this little chunk and see if you, you are only a delegate. You only is a delegated authority that is being given to you. Handle it with fear and trembling. Anywhere you are in the church, handle God's children with fear and trembling. Treat them as saints. Wash their feet. Bind their wounds. Look after them. Hear what they have to say. And then encourage them. When the enemy strikes them, don't put them down. It's not only in the church. In our children, in our families, in everything. Yes, we will correct them. But at the same time, make sure you look out for things that will encourage them, that will give them hope to live, that will give them courage to know, yes, I will succeed, that will make them feel and know that really, yes, for yes, for sure, I will get there. Be there for them, for every one of us, let's be there for the ultimate master and the Lord is Yeshua Hamashiach. And if any other thing try to possess itself as the ultimate master and Lord, remind them no way.
I've got the master who says the final in my life, who concludes in my life, who has all the power. And let's have the confidence to go to him. Let's have the confidence to always rely on him. Hallelujah. And brethren, you know, with time and what we are doing today, we will take time to round up with this. And as the scripture says this in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 5, and he said unto them that the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. He is still Lord of the Sabbath. Is also the Lord, when they're asking him, by what authority, why should your people eat? And he says, I am the Lord. I created it. So if anything poses and says, why, why, you know the question, oh, you don't have it, oh, you can't have it, oh, you don't have the qualification, oh, you don't, you, are, you don't merit it, oh, it's not for you, oh, you are that, oh, you are that, tell them that the Lord whom I come from, the vine from which I am rooted in, from which I get my life out of, he is the ultimate master and the creator and the God of everything in in the book of Acts 2 36 therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom how we have crucified both Lord and Christ let all Israel know it let all the world know it shout it over the hill and the valley let the elements of nature hear today that Jesus is both Lord and Christ amen he's the ultimate he is a above all he is the most powerful all creation he's the almighty brethren what will fail us to take him and put him where he belongs but in our own little languages we know that he's above all he is the ultimate he is far 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 beyond and peter shouted there and says let the whole house of israel know that jesus is lord and Christ. Confessed Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. The Bible says, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. Amen. In whom are all things. Brethren, have this confidence. What somebody listening to me have this strength in your trading, in your work area, in your business. Know it that Jesus in him is all things and it shall be well with you. It shall surely be well with you. In school, it will be well with you. In your life, it will be well with you. At work, it will be well with you. In the family, it will be well with you. Doesn't matter what you are going through right now and it looks like it's so dark, look straight in. You will see the light. First Corinthians 12, 3. We are for, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God call it Jesus accursed and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. He is the only one and the only one and the only one. Romans 14, 9. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both to the dead and to the living. Amen. He is Lord to, to that dead area, that dead part, that dead business, that dead academics, that dead sin, whatever that is dead, know it that Jesus is still Lord unto it. Whatever that is still living, you think is living, both of them, don't separate the two. He is still Lord over everything and he has the right, he has the power to make all things beautiful in his time brethren take your time when you get there and read you know revelation 1 11 read you know um colossians where it 1 18 and then read more you will know that yeshua hamashiach is lord and master and having this confidence we're going to pray now father we thank you this morning and we bless you we exalt your holy name we give you praise and we honor you Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords, for the reassurance, Lord. Oh, Lord, knowing this, we are still yet next weekend to continue. Heavenly Father, knowing this, we should not be shaken in mind. Knowing this, Father, we should not be afraid. Knowing this, Father, we should not fear what man will do to us. Knowing this, Lord, build up our confidence, build up our faith. 
build up our life in you, Lord, that we may stand strong. Thank you, Father, for you have heard and answered our prayers. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.